Well, the Bud Light backlash, ladies and gentlemen, almost in August is having huge, huge ramifications still for the company and Heiser Bush and its employees after billions of dollars lost, millions of customers lost, sales declining after they handed Dylan Mulvaney a sponsorship because they thought the next best step for their company was to slap their target audience in the face with political propaganda, abide by probably those ESG scores, those CEI index scores as the ex-marketing VP Alyssa Heinerscheid came out in a podcast said we need to make it more inclusive we need to get rid of that fratty image clearly worked out for them but because of all of this justifiable controversy and you would think all of those consequences were big enough nope it carries on according to the New York Post Anheuser-Busch are going to have to lay off hundreds and hundreds of employees. Anheuser-Busch to lay off hundreds of US corporate workers after Bud Light campaign disaster. Anheuser-Busch is set to lay off nearly 400 workers at its corporate offices in the wake of slumping sales that accelerated on April 1st when Bud Light partnered with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. The company revealed in a statement to the Wall Street Journal on Wednesday that the cut would affect less than 2% of its workforce which, according to Anheuser-Busch's website, includes 19,000 workers. The layoffs won't impact frontline workers such as brewery and warehouse staff, the company told the journal. The reconstructuring, the outlet reported, will eliminate corporate and marketing roles at major US offices, including St. Louis, New York, and Los Angeles. Anheuser-Busch CEO Brendan Whitworth added in the written statement, while we never take these decisions lightly, we want to ensure that our organization continues to be set for future long-term success. These corporate structure changes will enable our teams to focus on what we do best, insulting everybody's intelligence, brewing great beer for everyone, the embattled chief executive added, who's been notoriously tight-lipped since Mulvaney's post-outraged Bud Light consumer base. The post has sought comment from Anheuser Bush, which will release its second quarter earnings on August 2nd. And, you know, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, but if I was to bet, it's probably not going to look too good for them. You know, the situation Anheuser Bush Bud Light have put themselves in isn't going to do a U-turn anytime soon. People aren't going to forget for the foreseeable future the stunt that they pulled. And now, because as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, they abided by potentially these ESG scores, CEI index scores, push political propaganda on an audience that simply doesn't want it, they're now going to have to cut around 400 employees on top of all the other consequences that they have faced. So these companies in the future are really going to have to sit down and think to themselves, are these apparent ESG scores, CEI index scores, which I'm going to assume Bud Light are abiding by, it wouldn't surprise me if they're not, but let's just say they are, right? They're going to have to sit down and ask themselves, is it really worth it? We all know that powerful figures are behind these, but is it worth losing billions of dollars, millions of customers, your sales declining, you know, insulting women and men's intelligence? Because the result you're getting isn't positive for your company. Is this how much they want to push political propaganda? Is this how much they want to force ideas onto people? Because let's be honest, it's not about supporting these certain communities. It's about forcing these ideas onto people. And when Dylan Mulvaney had that canned scent swim for celebrating his day 365 of girlhood, that was a massive insult. You're telling everybody that this man is just as much of a woman than any other woman out there. How about celebrate real women? Riley Gaines, for example, or all the hardworking mothers out there. It was a massive slap in the face to the women and it insulted Bud Light's target audience. But then, do they care about that? Probably not. But talking about the days of girlhood, we now have another video making the rounds from Dylan Mulvaney. The last one everybody spoke about is when Dylan Mulvaney came out and addressed the Bud Light backlash. They called out the company for not sticking by him and wanted to tell the whole world how hard everything was. Uh, this time, the video making the rounds is day 500 of girlhood. Yeah, we're still going on with that trend, even though in the very same video, Dylan Mulvaney sits there and says, this is day 9,705 of being a woman. His four-year-old self knew, his 10-year-old self knew, even though a couple of years ago, everybody knew he was a gay man. Ignore your own eyes and ears, ladies and gentlemen, that's the real goal. But this is what Dylan Mulvaney had to say in this seven minute long video. Don't worry, we're not gonna watch it all. Take a listen. Hi, today would be day 500 of being a girl if I was still keeping up with that series. But I found myself in kind of an interesting position because if I make the content that I want to make and freely share my trans joy, I subject myself to a lot more trauma. So lately I've chosen to scale back in order to protect my overall well-being. And it works. I am quite happy. It's day 500 of publicly coming out as a woman. And that's a win. Um, on day 398, I learned that misery loves company. 
I think a lot of people have difficulty seeing others happy and successful, especially when they don't fit the standard of the patriarchy. And I can't tell you enough how much these last four months have felt like high school. On day 488, I learned through an online poll that 50% of Americans like me. And that felt like a Black Mirror episode because when do non-politicians get polled like that? And I do wish that it was 51%, but I also would like to know what exactly are we voting on? Because if it's, do they like my outfits? I think it would be much higher. But here's what I also learned from that, that the people that took that poll are judging me based on pictures and videos and articles. And those things make up such a small amount of who I actually am. And today on 500 is dedicated to my younger self who didn't get to celebrate so many awesome discoveries because I was just hoping to get by. And today is actually day 9,705 of being a woman because I've always been one. My four-year-old self knew that, my 10-year-old self knew that, my 15-year-old self knew that, and they deserve to celebrate these wins too. You know, some of this wording really does blow my mind and don't worry, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about all of that video because that's not what I wanna do for this video, but I saw it with Chris Tyson as well. I'm sure many of you have heard about that interview. You all know about what's going on with Chris Tyson, part of the Mr. Beast team transition. They use the same wording, the same line. They said, I've come out as a woman, I'm coming out as a woman. Was it more difficult for you to come out to yourself or to others? Myself, far more. Once I came out to myself, it, it was, I came out to myself with my therapist and, mm. it, and it took like, it took like three therapy sessions where I was like, I've known this for a long time. I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure. And then I was, you know, I, I, I know I, and then I was like, I am a woman. But you don't get to come out as a woman you're either a woman or you're not and if you have to announce to the world i'm coming out as a woman we all know this but it definitely means you're the opposite right <laughs> common sense is obviously hard to find these days but i'm sure that mulvaney will continue to grace social media with his lovely tiktok videos even though they did mention in that video it's not a big part of who they are even though it's a big part <laughs> of the reason why everybody sat there and talking about them it's a big part of how they've gained so much fame. It's all very confusing. I don't even know what's going on. Half the time I really don't because one week it's something, the next week it's something else. I don't know how anybody keeps up with it. I really don't. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the video. We're gonna end it right there. Leave your comments down below about the Anheuser-Busch situation and Dylan Mulvaney's day 500 of girlhood video. I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> if you have enjoyed today, please for me, make sure to leave a like rating if you're new. Hit that big red subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. I just want to thank everybody right now who is supporting the channel. The videos are doing amazing recently. We're on the road to 50k and we're going to absolutely smash it in no time whatsoever. So once again, I want to thank all of you guys who are watching right now. But until tomorrow, it has been your boy JD. Have a great day. Stay safe and I'm out. Peace.